Good morning, NBC. This is Pastor Charlie Koo coming to you with the Word of God today for November 1st, 2022. I'm reading from Genesis 42, verses 1 through 17 from the NIV. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you just keep looking at each other? He continued, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. Then 10 of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with the others because he was afraid that harm might come to him. So Israel's sons were among those who went to buy grain, for there was famine in the land of Canaan also. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. As soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He asked. From the land of Canaan, they replied, to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Then he remembered his dreams about them and said to them, You are spies! You have come to see where our land is unprotected. No, my lord, they answered. Your servants have come to buy food. We are all the sons of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. No, he said to them, you have come to see where our land is unprotected. But they replied, your servants were 12 brothers, the sons of one man who lives in the land of Canaan. The youngest is now with our father and one is no more. Joseph said to them, it is just as I told you, you are spies. And this is how you will be tested as surely as Pharaoh lives. You will not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of your one of your number to go uh, to get your brother. The rest of you will be kept in the prison so that your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. If you are not, then as surely as Pharaoh lives, you are spies. And he put them in all custody, put them all in custody for three days. This is the word of the Lord. Um, if you're like me, you love stories of vindication. There's a lot of things going on that I just want to point out real quick. Uh, I, I love how uh, Jacob starts. <laughs> Jacob heard he he's the old man. He heard news that there's some food in Egypt and they're starving because of the famine. And uh, if you understand something about Jacob, he is a survivor, and so. Uh, when he looks at his kids just kind of staring at each other not knowing what to do he's frustrated he's a, he's a jewish father telling his sons what oi what are you going to do are you going to just uh, look at each other there go and uh, get us some food that we might not die and so the 10 10 of the brothers the older ones they go but the ones the sons of rachel uh, the last remaining one benjamin is held back because uh, most likely because of the trauma that Jacob has sustained from the loss of his favored son, Joseph. Uh, Benjamin, he's the youngest, he holds back. And so they go, the 10 brothers who sold Joseph off. And now in verse, uh, verse 6, verse 6 is, the moment of vindication. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. This is, uh, in the sovereignty of God, this is a fulfillment passage, a fulfillment verse of uh, his dream. Joseph's first dream, when he was the grain, that was, you know, stock of grain that was bound together, standing tall, all the others, the 11 others bowed down. This is happening right here. And um, another verse that strikes me is that although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. I don't know if uh, you are like me, you have a soft spot for this particular scenario. It is the person who has 
the injustice has been per perpetrated upon that actually cares to remember the perpetrators. Um, it is as if the brothers who passed, um, sold off his, uh, his, their brother and, uh, and they passed him off to their own father as dead. It is as if they actually ha were able to erase him out of the reality of their minds. It's kind of frightening that we can actually do that in some way, that we can actually adapt to this selective amnesia, forgetting that, well, he's there. <laughs> and also, we have uh, no small irony here. There's an, um, okay, so verse 8. Although Joseph recognized uh, his brothers, his brothers did not recognize him. Right? And so we have this, uh, this moment where Joseph is getting just a little bit in of his jollies. I mean, come on. He's how, what, endured how many years? Um, he was 17 when he was sold off. He's 30 when he started. So about 13, 14, he's in his 14th year in Egypt. Uh, this place from uh, his hometown, from his own family, from his uh, father who loves him dearly. And, um, and this is what, what I find so ironic. So ironic. God loves to point out the irony that, that sin thrusts us into. This is, uh, they volunteer this information. Um, they say, oh, we are certainly, you know, uh, we're all the sons of one man, as if that would somehow curry favor. Uh, your servants are honest men, not spies. We're not sent here to, to scope out uh, vulnerabilities. We're not here to, to see where the land is unprotected as you claim, as you accuse me. But here is a uh, verse 13. But they reply, your servants were 12 brothers, the son of one man who lives in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph knows, oh, my father still lives. He's alive in the land of Canaan. The youngest is now with their father. Oh, my younger brother is still alive. And then he says, and one is no more. I don't know if you, if that sends you a little chill. I don't know if for me it does because look, they are the brothers that sold him off to make him no more. Now he's not a part of a group anymore because, you know, basically without really going into the details, there is a confession there. One is non, not, no more, but who is he? Who are they speaking to? The one who is no more. He's right there. They just bow down to him. I don't know if. If you don't uh, find something intriguing in the irony, I think uh, we don't we don't know how to appreciate the Bible because the Bible is replete, is so full with ironies. I don't know if there's a technical term for it. There should be one, like a divine irony, some kind of irony where where they people we we think in some way we think this this is the right thing, and but God controverts that as readers, privy to the omniscient narrator telling the story, we. We see it now. How often do we go about in our days without uh, giving, paying heed to that possibility that there is someone up there uh, actually writing, writing down what we're doing for one? I mean, that's a visible, uh, like facts based stuff. Even our motives are weighing, right? That's what the Bible says, that, that he weighs our motives. In the end, we'll be a judge for what we do. But even if we did the so-called good thing, it will be judged uh, for our motives and our intentions. Um, this is the encouraging thing about uh, today's text, is that a vindication, it's a story of vindication. If you've been in the receiving end of uh, maltreatment, being disregarded, being sold off. Um, there is a time when there's a comeuppance for those who have perpetrated that against you. And uh, of course, in a long enough timeline, we're talking about heaven and hell stuff. But even within this time, even within this period, uh, even if you are uh, are large enough to forgive, 
because you love uh, our Christ, because we want to follow along with uh, God's command to forgive and love one another, even if you did, um, the correction, the correction is, is what we see right here when Joseph is testing his brothers and let me put you in the stockade for a little while while you go get, uh, go fetch my younger brother. A uh, wonderful story, the t uh, turning of the tables. Uh, whenever there is a, a supposed power structure where some of the people that have the strength, they bully or they isolate, ostracize one person. And then turns out that, well, that was in, in the God's domain. Uh, the hierarchy was reversed over over a period of 13 uh, years uh, when they had forgotten all about their um, jo brother Joseph because they sold him off as slaves, uh, standing tall right in front of them uh, as they bowed down. Uh, the fulfillment and the irony that the Bible is laden with is so masterful. There is no literature that could ever compare to this. Uh, may the, the scriptures that we read today be the beautiful window through which you see the living God. And because if you do encounter that living God, that is more than a blessing in itself. Uh, blessings to you of such kind in Jesus' name.